Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to Inspiration for today. And it's Monday. I'm so glad you tuned back in because we're coming to the great end chapters of Revelation. And we had so much fun looking into Revelation chapter 20 on Friday about the millennium, the thousand year reign of Christ. But I felt like I needed more. And so I asked, you all know Tom Atkins, a pastor of, well, I call it 301, but I know that's not, what's the official? That's fine. 301 is it. Okay. Tom has, over the years, studied on this topic. And, and so I asked him to come on and just answer some of my questions, and hopefully he'll hit your questions too. So thanks, Tom. Glad to be here. It's always fun. So the topic is the millennium, and we, mm -hmm. we talked about it on Friday, that it's a thousand years that's truly going to happen with Jesus on the throne. Yes. But I wanted just to dig a little bit deeper today in that, because that's in our all our future, right? Yes, it is. As believers, we will be in the millennial kingdom. So who is in the millennium? Well, it's several groups. First is the believing Jews and Gentiles that are alive at the end of the tribulation. And they will come into the millennial kingdom. We will come with Jesus from heaven when he comes in his second coming. And so we will come with heavenly bodies. The Jews and the Gentiles from the tribulation will come with earthly bodies. So it, during the millennial kingdom, there'll be both heavenly bodies and earthly bodies. That that alone is so interesting. I, I, I'm sure and we know we can, very little about it. But I'm sure we can talk to each other, don't you think? Oh, absolutely. We will be able to. We'll be able to interact and talk and do things. Absolutely. But the the earthly bodies will be having kids during the millennial kingdom. And we will be like angels, the Bible tells us, so we won't be. That, that it's all interesting. So yeah. those children, though, they won't be born believers, right? Well, they'll be born under Jesus' care and rule. And so everybody alive at the beginning will be a believer. Now, I think those kids will have free will. But when you're immersed in something that's all one way, you know, would some of them become a non-believer at that point? Um, I don't think early on, but maybe later. But towards the end of the millennial reign, the Bible tells us that Jesus will lose Satan from the abyss where he went before the millennial kingdom. And he will roam around the earth deceiving some of the people that were born during the millennial kingdom, because God wants everyone to have a choice. He doesn't want anybody to accept him just because they, they kind of had to, or they didn't have a choice. He wants everyone to have a choice. And yeah. So, and that, that part's going to be made clear to all of us uh, that are going through this study together. When we get back together tomorrow and start at verse seven, when the event you're talking about, when Satan is loose and he does get, we're going to see. He gets a lot of followers. He gets some followers. Absolutely. It's amazing to me. Anyway, so Tom, since the, the millennial reign is here on earth, life in some ways is bound to be like what it is now, or at least what it's like to live on earth. The Bible really doesn't tell us anything about that. It says the lion will live down will lay down with a lamb. So there will be no, there won't be disputes. There won't be any evil or killing or anything like that going on. But we, we really don't know, but we know it'll be wonderful. And we know that we'll have assigned roles by Jesus for that period of time. And, and that brings up, that alone is a good point that I think a lot of people probably have missed that in the millennium, if not even in heaven, but we're going to have work to do. Yes. But work we enjoy or, or fitted for, you know? 
I think it'll be something that we're just is right at our sweet spot in our heart that we want to do that uh, brings glory to God. Because work in itself is not meant as punishment. Right. That's right. Well, will you have any other, what are some other uh, things that I might be missing about the millennium? Well, um, at the end of the millennium, um, there is, of course, the, the final judgment. Yeah. Tom, don't spoil That one's coming for sure. Okay. In, in, an, in, in an upcoming show. Yeah. Some of the covenants that God made to his people will finally be fulfilled. Yeah. And uh, God fulfills his covenant promises to Israel. Some of them go back. I mean, they go back thousands of years. But God is always true. He's always faithful. And he always does what he says he will do. So they'll fill, fulfill the Palestinian covenant, which gives Israel all the land that it used to have back in the time of Abraham. By the covenant. way, just on that, the capital will be Jerusalem. Thank you. Absolutely. <laughs> and it fulfills the Davidic covenant where a descendant of David is ruler on the throne. Jesus is. And uh, the new covenant, all of, God, all of Israel that comes into the millennial kingdom are saved. They're all saved. So the ones that rejected Christ, um, that was prior to the millennial kingdom. In the last years of the tribulation, I'm sure you talked about that, where there were 144,000 yes. Jewish evangelists that were leading the charge for Christ during the tribulation. It just boggles the mind how great that is that when God makes a promise, and it certainly does not look like it was going to happen. That's right. <laughs> he never forgets it. That's right. He is always true to his word, no matter what. And, and those covenants are, are all throughout the Old Testament. Yes. Most, some of them are in the, go all the way back uh, to, to early, like in Genesis, right? Uh, t time of Abraham. Yeah. When God gives Israel the land he wants them to have, and he defines the boundaries in Scripture. It goes, yes, it goes all the way back there. And then over the years, you know, it's been chipped away at and chipped away at and completely taken away and returned and then chipped away at some more and you know but now it'll be just the way god said it would be there's such a lesson in that for us that sometimes you know there are promises of god that we claim and it seems like they don't come true and then but god never forgets what he has said in his word and he's going to make things right and a lot of that happens right here in the millennial yeah. Kingdom. Be you know, we think about the world the way we always wanted it. That'll be it. Oh, Tom. I hope, folks, that this becomes an encouragement. Well, actually, all of Revelation was meant for as an encouragement to get through rough times. They were in rough times. And this it says in chapter one uh, that this is meant to encourage. And this chapter really does, Tom. So thank you for shedding some light on it. Well, great to be here. It's always uh, fun doing this with you. Hey, Robert. before we go, real quick, we have 30 seconds left. You have a Bible study going on Saturdays, don't you? And, and Book of Romans. Yes. Last Saturday, we uh, started chapter one, and we're going verse by verse through the Book of Romans. We take about an hour and a quarter, hour and a half. And do do a chapter every and week. that's by Zoom, right? Yes, it's on Zoom. It so, folks, if you'd like to join in, and and you've seen how good a teacher Tom is, then the information on how to join is being put below us. And uh, so, I encourage you. It's a great way to get into your Bible. All right, Tom. Thanks so much. You're welcome. We'll great. see everyone else tomorrow. Bye, Love you now. guys. Great, great to be with you. Day. It's wonderful. This is the day.